It's a beautiful Sunday, the 16th of November in the year 2020. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of the assignment program. I'm your host. My name is Andrew Mons. And after exactly 268 days remaining before the 2021 general elections, we continue to take keen interest in following up on the current state of governance. Currently, voter registration, which began on the 9th of November 2020, still remains a challenge, potentially looking at whether indeed the Electoral Commission of Zambia will manage to register the targeted 9 million voters within the time frame that they've given themselves. Incidents of political violence have continued to be on the rise. We're on the brink of defaulting on our foreign debt after we missed the payment of more than 40 million uh, US dollars last month. Corruption scandals involving government agencies are on our tabloids. And the biggest question is, who will walk us out of this economic quagmire? My guest this evening is President of the National Restoration Party, Mr. Stephen Nyerenda. President Nyerenda, good evening. Good evening. And welcome to the assignment. Good, uh, good evening. Uh, Zambians for Zambians. Only Zambians will develop this country. It's us and no one else. Those joining the conversation on the Movie TV Plus, Bouquet Channel 1, the top star decoder, Channel 104, you'll be able to come through and give us your contributions via the number that is scrolling down your TV screen, that is plus 26-097859-4682. Those that are joining the conversation on, on the Movie TV Plus, uh, on the Ask Movie TV platform and the, uh, and the YouTube platform, yours is uh, those very particular uh, platforms. Get to the comment section, give us your comments regarding the issues that we are talking about. We're discussing the current state of, state of governance and potentially the way forward. Now, allow me to start from a note that uh, I think we've uh, really uh, not focused on very much with you politicians. The agricultural sector. Now, I know for a fact that as a country we've relied so much on the mining sector uh, that has heavily been, you know, uh, affected by fluctuations of prices. Why have we, as a country, not relied so much on agriculture that you potentially, you know, the politicians say we've got, you know, so much that we can achieve from the agricultural sector. Why have we not paid attention to this important sector that can, you know, remove us out of this economic doldrum as a country? Mr. Monsa, uh, uh, right. You have really hit the nail on the head. And that's what has made us to be there where we are. That's what has made me to stand up to be the, here where I am. Uh, you see, if you check, uh, I will repeat, if you check on our um, income side, on the uh, budget, you will find that there's zero on agriculture. Uh, when you go through, you check their policies, they said, or they say, that the agricultural sector contributes about 18% to the, to, the, uh, the GDP. to the GDP. It's a joke. It's a joke. It must be 90%. Because, uh, again, I will go backwards. This is what God gave us. God, God gave us the piece of land, mm. which is Zambia, and the ability, the willpower to develop this to what we need. But what we are doing, right up now, what we are doing, we have misplaced agendas, misplaced priorities. We focus on things that have got Vilipena Kumutu. That's why now we find we start fighting. We start fighting political violence, what and what, all these things. Because the, the leadership wants to sway people away from the actual thing. Agricultural sector is the key to the way to go. But let me dissect it. Let me dissect it. In Zambia here, we have got three main uh, areas mm. of, uh, of perhaps uh, categories of farmers. The first one is the subsistence farmer. The subsistence farmer actually is the majority. We are the majority. We farm just to eat. The second is the, the medium scale. The third one, uh, what you call the large scale farmers. Now, who is controlling the large scale farmers? The large-scale farmers is, uh, uh, is being controlled almost 90% by the foreigners, the so-called white farmers. They have taken the, pieces, the best pieces of land, and Mr. Mansa, you will be shocked that these people do not produce for us. These people, they produce for the outside there. Containers come, they load, they go outside. Tomorrow, 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 But the actual produce is being uh, taken outside. Let me give you an example. Mr. Mansa, uh, Zambian coffee 
is supposed to be the best coffee. Have you ever gone into a shop and buy Zambian coffee the way it is? No. The Zambian coffee is being exported outside to South Africa and other countries. And it's roasted there. And it comes back for you to buy. Where on earth? They say we cannot roast coffee. We grow, but we can't roast. This, these are some of the problems. Let's highlight a few. Mm. But, but today, if, I, I, I was if, going around, I wanted to buy about... mangoes. I wanted to buy mm. mangoes. I found South African mangoes on the, on the, on the, on the, on the market. I said, you guys, we are, we, you can't have a leadership that allows such things. Mm. The, these, these large scale farmers that I'm talking about, they are getting all the machinery free. They don't pay duties, what or not, because agricultural machinery is subsidized in the sense of taxes are not being paid. There's no duty. They come here, produce with all these incentives, they take the things out and sell, and the money remains there. They use our country, our soil, our everything. That's why that thing that we are saying, Zambia is for Zambians, only us can develop it. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not condemning them. I'm condemning the leadership. Now let me come back to the majority, the majority of the subsistence farmers. The subsistence farming is what feeds most of our people. What does the government do? The government gives uh, uh, what they call uh, uh, farming input at fish. Really, before we can get down to you know the fish and, uh, and the subsistence farming, you mentioned something very profound uh, that uh, much of our large scale farmers are controlled by foreigners. And you know, uh, you know the conditions under which you know these have been given. Look, they've been given favorable, favorable conditions for them to to be able to conduct, you know, uh, you know, farming business in Zambia. Where do you think it is so? When we've realized the potential that the agriculture sector has, why don't you think? Why do you think government, you know, is in this business of uh, creating an enabling environment for foreigners as opposed to uh, creating an enabling environment? That's what I'm saying. You know, it's a wrong relationship. Look, look, let me go again. I give another example, then I'll answer your question. Mm. Another example is the, the, the sugar plantations in Mazabuka. There were lots of Zambians who had small, small sugar plantations. They've been taken away. The people who are doing that, they are white farmers. And now they are feeding direct into the sugar, and that stuff is being exported. How they get their money, nobody, no one knows. Now, who is doing that? Is there are the policies that we make. The policies that we make, they are good, not good enough to see that we extract as much as we can from our land, from our agriculture uh, um, activities, and then take this money, put it in our income. Zambia can pay its, all its bills from, just from agricultural sectors, sector. There are so many other things that are happening. Uh, you know, the other day, I'll tell you this. The other day, I went out uh, of my yard, you know what we call Maruben? Maruben, the Marlboro. Marlboro. Yes. Viku Guachari all mm. over. I tell my guy that uh, helps me at home, mm. put a sack here and let of them go. So I harvested the whole week I was eating and making juice. Mm. Those things, they grow like bushfire. Yeah? They grow all over. Why can we not uh, 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 um, uh, take some young guys and, and, and um, empower them, give them land, let them do that. That has got a lot of value in terms of export. We drink the, the juice that we go, marble juice, which comes from outside. Mm. But in actual fact, we have the proper stuff here. It's just a small example. It goes on and on and on and on. It's the leadership. They have no focus to say this is how we can create wealth. By the way, Creating wealth is a deliberate move. You don't just start sitting there to say, start crying, Tiribendarama, what and what. No, you have to sit down and project to say, I want to have so many billions from this sector, so many billions from fish farming, so mm. many billions from beef farming, and so on and so on. But when you check on our budget, on our income side, there's almost zero from agricultural side. But you put, you give out almost six billion. How do you give out money where you don't have an income? It's the leadership. It's the leadership. And it, with us, we can explain exactly what we are going to do to make sure that this country becomes rich only from agriculture. 
We can't have a, 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 a country where every fruit is imported, vegetables are imported, even Chihuahua now, just are import. Why? Why? If you go over to, Zim, to, to Tanzania, right up now, in Tanzania, you can't, you, you, they, they don't allow any fruits coming from outside. But have you seen countries, companies which have developed? Mm. There's a country called Azam. It's, big, it's one of the, it's made billions and billions mm. just from agriculture. But, but, but my question again, it's the same question that I asked your colleague yesterday, your colleague Andy Fudbanda. You know, the things that you're talking about don't sound very technical. These are simple things that government can make a decision and, you know, and do in, in, in a single day. Why have we failed to harness the potential that, you know, lies in agriculture? Why, why? Isn't there anyone in government that can think like you are thinking and say, look, we can make a lot of money off mulberry, we can make a lot of money out of mangoes, we can make a lot of money out of guavas, we can have our own plantations of, 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 of productions for all these you know, fruits that God has given us. Where is the problem, Mr. Nyerenda? Where is the problem? Uh, you know, we sit here, all of us, we sit here, it's not as easy as we are talking, uh, 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 as I'm sitting here talking to say this is going to be... You make like it that. sound it easy. For me, for us in Narek, it's very easy. And I will tell you what we are going to do. Just simple. I'm not saying uh, just for the sake of saying. I'll tell you. What we are going to do ourselves, first of all, mm. we are going to create pieces of land along the rivers, along the Kafue River, along the Rwangwa River, along all these rivers that we have. That's what we're going to do. And if there's a foreigner there, we'll mm. compensate them with some pieces of land in the hills because they have got money to make boreholes. Our people don't have. So they will use that water to make sure that they irrigate certain areas. Now, I, the other day I said, I don't know whether it's this platform or not, that I flew over the Kafue River, just one river. You fly from here all the way up to the Copper Belt. Do you know how much land that is along? Do you know what that can bring? So we will take the youth, give them this la these pieces of land, small, small pieces of land, and tell them what they are going to, 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 to farm. Say so you are going to do wheat, you are going to do maize, you are going to do mulberry, you are going to do mangoes, you are going to do all the things. Our duty, mm. our duty is in two thoughts. One, to supply everything that those people need. Develop technologies. When I say that, it sounds, it's the, basically a center where they can get machinery, a center where they can get knowledge, a center where they can get everything that they need. The second thing is that we will look for market for those things. It's our duty mm. to go around to all our neighboring countries, even South Africa itself. If I'm go to South Africa to say, I am enjoying, mm. or you, you are, I am buying 80% um, uh, of your produce. I just want you to buy 10% to begin with. If not, I'm sorry, I have to stop buying from you. Who is going to lose? They will lose. So they will start by buying 10% of ours, and they get, uh, we buy 80%, and we keep on coming up until it's a 50-50. But before we do that, we have to help our young people to make sure they have got technologies, to make sure they have got um, uh, skills, to package those things in, in, in an international quality, international standard, to make sure these goods are sellable throughout the world. Mm. This is why I said the other day to say ourselves, we are not going to, uh, to ask for donors to give us money, no. If they give us, we'll take. But what we are going to tell them is that mm. we want you to treat us as eco-business partner. Buy my goods, pay the right amount of money. That's all that I want. Your money, you can keep it. You seem to be, very, to be sharing a very unhealthy relationship with the foreigners. You stated on this program, Mr. Nyarenda, that you chase away, uh, you, you relocate uh, yes. the foreigners that you know, uh, have their land along 
along rivers and, yes. and, and, and all these things. Yes, I would do so. You seem to have a very glitch relationship with the foreigners. No, well, don't no, you think no, we, no, can, no. We, can, we can make the most out of our foreigners that are here in no, Zambia? No, no. I'll give you an example myself. I lived uh, more than 50% of my productive uh, time, or more than that, over 30 years, 36 years, I lived outside this country. And one time, I will give this an example. Mm. There was a piece of land, huge piece of land where my warehouse was. And that piece of land was given almost at 1% one, uh, 1 its buying price for people who want to develop there. I applied. They called me. And they told me openly to say, Mr. Nirenda, we can't give you that. You are not a, a German. If you want to go and ask your wife, who is a German at that time, and a German wife, to, or to, or to apply from her company to do that. This is for indigenous Germans to make sure there's something that they wanted to achieve. Mm. Now, ourselves, we know something that is good for our people. You remove your people, you put the foreigners there. You take your people, put them in the hills. And in the hills, there's no water. And then you, get, you go to the donors and ask them to go and make boreholes there for your people. Along the Kafue Road, uh, River, which I know very well, there are mostly uh, foreign uh, um, uh, companies um, that are there. You cannot even enter. They have blocked. They are having the cream of it. I have nothing against it. They can continue. But they should continue somewhere else. That is for my people. Let me say this. In the world, all development that you see today, mm. it is started along the rivers because of easy transport, easy water supply, and so on and so on. How do you take your people, remove them from the rivers, and give people? I have properties along the Kariba, uh, Kariba Dam. Half of those properties that are there, they belong to white people. It's even difficult. They are fenced off. It's difficult for a Zambian to go through. You want a Zambian to pump water <coughs> thousands and thousands of, of, of meters while a white man who has got money or a foreigner who has got money is pumping water just a meter away. And first of all, that foreigner, when he's, uh, when he's coming to invest here, mm. he's enjoying the rates of sometimes 2% per annum, 3% per annum. You borrow your money at 40%, 50% per annum, and then you are disadvantaged in the location of the area. Then how, how do you compete? You are killing your own people. The, 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 the governments that mm. we have, the leadership that we have, it's killing our own people. Now, they, they, they take, I'll go even further now, I'll move away from this commercial. I come again to subsistence. Yes, but, but before we get to subsistence farming, let, let's uh, move this conversation step by step. Yes. Uh, after you spoke about re relocating the foreigners to the hills and then the youth, you know, get to, to, yes. to, to, to the land along the, to the rivers. Yes. Do you think today, President Nyerenda, the youth are ready to take up agriculture because I'll give an example mm -hmm. as we are growing up uh, in schools mm -hmm. you know um, one of the issues one of the you know punishments we are given when we fail for example was to, is, is, is for us to go in the garden and you know to, to a tampo to a and, and we considered you know agriculture or farming as uh, you know um, you know a sector for those that fail but even today agriculture is con you know is, 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 is attributed to people who are old like yourselves us young people, we do not want to get into agriculture. Do you think partly that is what has caused us not to realize the importance of agriculture, especially the young people? It's all about leadership. What you have just said is that you are walking with your hands down, your legs up. You are walking upside down. It, it, it cannot work. Agriculture is what uh, uh, has been given to us. The Lord, the God gave us this piece of land to make sure that we till it. It is how you are bringing up your children. Is how you are bringing up your countrymen. Your countrymen. That's that's where the problem is. The problem because is because even our bringing, uh, President Yerenda, will be told by our parents that when you fail your exams, to actuala kumushi mukuya mukulima, and and that that is a perception that we've grown up with. That look, uh, if I fail school, mm. I'll go to the village to go and farm. Uh, that has given us a perception that farming is for the people that are failures. You you know that's the thinking that perhaps young people have in town. In villages, it's not like that. And believe you me, Lusaka, the town of Lusaka, is not Zambia. The town, the, the line of rail is not Zambia. Zambia is vast, and there are all these people all over. 
And believe you me, if me have seen, when you go to, 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 to Eastern Province, for example, you are going to find powerful young people who have gardens, who have what, who are farming, proper farming, but they are not being helped. And that's where the problem is. Mm. If I'm going to get, now let me go into something. If I'm going to get 30 million kwacha, I said give it to the artists. And, and I get zero kwacha, give it to somebody who wants to farm. Why should I go for farming? I will remain in town and be uh, an, an artist. Uh, an but, but, artist but also, that there, there are free. a lot of challenges that come with farming. President I'm Nguyen. talking about, yes. All right? There are a lot of challenges. But mm. also, I, I give you a very practical example of how uh, our education curriculum has been, you know, oriented. And we've been, you know, oriented in this particular manner that when you fail, you go to the village and do farming. When you fail in school, you know, you, you have to go to the garden. Kwambo Kulima. How do you begin to reorient our education I, I, system? I don't think it's a very right. To, to, uh, how do you begin to re reorient our education system to meet the demands of the importance of the agricultural sector? Mi Mr. Mansa, I think this is not right what you have said. It is say, right. uh, the mind of the young people is only to do some other, other jobs, not... Uh, but how many young people today can confidently say that when I grow up I want to be a farmer? Uh, wait, let, let me uh, uh, answer that question by just going to school of agriculture. The school of agriculture is full. The school in Chalimbana is full. The University of Chalimbana is full. Uh, NRD is full. Who are those? Those are young people from school. What are they doing there? They are doing agriculture. And by the way, perhaps uh, 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 I may sound a bit disrespectful mm. to say perhaps you haven't done research on that. I have spent a lot of time with the friends of mine in the civil service in the Ministry of Agriculture. The biggest problem, Mr. Mwansa, is I do not have incentive for uh, people like you to go for agriculture. I don't have, I make incentives to people like Jeraboz who I value also so much. But I say, look, go and have that mind. You take that, you go and sell, you have money. No, that is wrong. Those are shortcuts. Those are shortcuts. A rule of a farmer, you plant, you let it germinate, you wet, you weed, you make sure diseases are not there, keep on watering, it flowers, and the fruit comes, and you then, when it ripens, you can, with it, you can harvest it. Some people, they want to plant today and eat it today. It will not be there. And the rule of a farmer doesn't work like that. So it is up to us, the leadership, mm. to put a lot of empowering, empowerment. This is what I've just said. As we are going to sweep the streets of Lusaka, the streets of Copper Belt, the streets of all these towns, and take these young people and bring them to these areas I've talked about, and give them incentives. Show them that these guys are going to be millionaires within a couple of years when they do what they are doing. Mm. And believe you me, these people that are used today as fighting machinery, these are used like car cutters to move around aimlessly. Surely, will, not they, will, will they not go for that, that I'm talking about? They will. People right up now, if you go to town center, the young people, they have nothing to do nothing completely to do. Anything will go. But what we will show them? We will show them what is good. Mm. And, 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 and you, you agree with me that these are most of the people that have migrated from villages uh, where there's land to, to, to till, where, there's, where they can plant all these things that you're talking about. They've come to Lusaka where they think opportunities are. But one of the great challenges... Yeah, I, I will explain that. I can the, explain why they are running away. Yes. One of, well, 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 they don't want to farm. No, 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 no. But, no, but no, one, no, of one, that, one, one, one of the major challenges that um, a, you know, a youth in a, that, that wants to get into agribusiness will face today, President Nyerenda, especially in Lusaka, is the issue of land. Where do I start from? How do I acquire land? Land is quite expensive in Lusaka, if you ask me. Mm. How will the government of, of Nareb ensure that the environment is conducive, for young people especially, to acquire mm. land so that they can use it for agriculture? Mm -hmm. that is, land is a topic on its own that we are going to talk. From the day one, by the way, I, I just turned one year in active politics and as the president of Nareb. Uh, from day one, I am the person who advocates to say, Everyone who is outside there should not buy land. 
Land is not there for sale. That's why on that budget, on the income side, there is no money that they are sharing. Okay, we have received so much money this year from selling land. But yet everybody is selling land. It's illegal. It's illegal in the judicial system. They know it. It's illegal in the fraternity of the lawyers who sign all those things. They know it's wrong. It's wrong. I sat down one day with my counsel. I said, can you educate me why this is happening? Mm. They all, oh, it's a greediness. If, if there's a 2 million or 10 million that is going to, to change hands by selling, there is 10% for the lawyer. Just a sign, you have your money. And the thing goes, everyone, even foreigners are selling land. We are saying every Zambian today can collect, can have land for free. It's still there. I don't know in 10 years or in 20 years to come, but as of today, every Zambian should be able to get free land. It starts from there. But let me also come back to where you said that the young people are running away from the village to come to town. It's true. Even me, I'll do the same. Even you, you do the same. And the reason is this. When the, the government now is buying these fertilizers and going to give people, it's, it's, it's really a joke, and it hurts me. You know, when they are giving, the people are looking as if he, they are receiving from little gods and things like that, and they feel good, they sit there on top. But let me explain exactly what is happening. A person is given two bags of fertilizer. What can you farm from two bags of fertilizer? A, one, one hectare, which is 2.5 uh, acres, you need eight bags. And a bag is costing today 600 kwacha. Where is this young man going to get? The, these young men, they, are, they, have, they have got the power enough to do even two, two hectares. Ten hectares. I did uh, about ten hectares with my brother, with these empty hands. The late brother of mine. We did that. But that time it was mm. better. Now you need fertilizers, otherwise nothing will grow. And that's another topic for another day where we are taking these seeds and what and chemicals from somewhere else. It's another topic. But this young man mm. who wants to farm is given to two pockets of fertilizer. That means he can do less than an acre. Can on or so. When he gets the yield from there, perhaps what he's going to get is barely perhaps a four or five thousand kwacha by the end of the day. What is he going to do with the five thousand kwacha for the whole year? And even that five thousand to get it from the government is a fight. It's a fight. He will go and sleep at, uh, uh, at those people who are paying for almost two or three months before they can give him his own money. W wouldn't you run away? So you look this here. And this thing is not bringing me anything. The way we are doing right up now the agriculture with our subsistence farming is sending them into more poverty. Is sending them to be cut captives of politicians, so that when the politicians can go there, they should be looked at as to my small gods. No, we are not going to do that. We need to be servants of those people. If somebody needs eight bags, give him eight bags and give him a loan. And that loan, don't squeeze it. Let him pay that loan for the period of perhaps five years. If somebody is capable of doing ten hectares, give him eight bags. That's how it should be. It must be sustainable. What is going on now is not sustainable. It's making these people more hungry, more poor, more so that you can walk through there after five years to say, vote for me. Ndina Nikola Teran to my bags or to me. Me, what I tell the people when I go, when they come to you, tell them that these people, whatever they are bringing you, is more poison than them helping you. This is the reason, Mr. Mwansa, mm. why people are running away. From the why young people are running away. Say, can't see, let me just go and look for an, a job. And they come here, they don't find a job. They are jammed. What they find here is just dirty around, pollution, what and what, and then they are meant to fight against each other. We have seen, even yesterday, that's what you see. Because once they are bought Chivuku, Chijababagulira, Mawapasakuna, 20 kwacha, I'm going to deal with them. They go and beat, then they come with a picture. Have you seen we have beaten him? Can you give us another 50 kwacha? <laughs> this uh, is what is happening. But, but we're still These are about, not the politics. We're still talking about agriculture. This is killing the country. Let's get to uh, your plans as a party regarding subsistence, subsistence farming and how you, you ensure that the policy around subsistence farming you know, is one that favors 
uh, the local farmers. I love that. Um, I love that. What we are going to do ourselves, first of all, subsistence and farming, we can upgrade it, it can go up and down. Let that person who grows food for himself be enough. I believe any family, any mm. couple must be able to deal with one acre or one, one hectare. It's a small piece of land, one hectare. They must be able to. So if these people, they are told, don't worry guys, we want you to do two hectares. You do another hectare, we'll give you more money and you won't pay for the credit facility. I'm giving you eight bags of fertilizers for each hectare. If you're going to have 10 hectares, I'll give you 80, 80 bags. And 80 bags cost so much. And this is a credit facility that you are going to pay. But once you make more, you, instead of making 80 hectares, you make 100 hectares, we will squash the credit facility. If you produce more, we are not going to, 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 to make you pay. If you produce less, we will make you pay double because you are lazy. So there must be incentives. You bring a whip and a carrot mm. to make sure that the people are able to produce for themselves and surplus for the nation. And that's not a problem. I've traveled throughout this country. In fact, if you look at the northern part of Zambia, it's, they have water, they have land, they have what? Southern now, uh, although they are the ones who are farmers and the eastern province mm. who feed the nation, it's the, 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 the water has been very scanty. But another thing that we are going to do for these people is to make sure we make dams all over so that water is available at all given time. And then they can continue doing production throughout the year. Do you know what happens in villages these days? Once now, job has started. Oct end of October, November, jobs have started. They go to farm, do, and so on and so on. When it reaches somewhere in, the, in the March, April, they have stopped. There is nobody who works until again October. Once the harvest is done, you can't. You can't. Mm -hmm. These people now, they are stagnant because there's nothing to do. We will make sure that we have policies that the production goes on and on and on. Who tells us to say a farmer should only be active during the rainy season and the harvest period, and thereafter he goes in slumber, he goes to sleep, and that's what is happening in all villages. Mm. Then they are not productive. Then because you are not productive, you have a lot of time, you eat more and sleep more and you drink more and become even much more lazy. Mm. And then you come to the state to say, look, I don't have food. And the state is standing up with what they call DMU. Mm. And they look like two small gods and feeling so proud. That should stop. Let people be self-reliant. Let people do things for themselves and make people responsible. Mm. And that's what we are going to do ourselves. Mm. Besides that challenge, what would you potentially say is another major challenge? that the subsistence farmers are facing. For example, uh, do you think the market is, 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 is enough? I do know for a fact that Zambia is, a, is, 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 a, is, is an you know, interlinked country that is surrounded by a population of over 200 million. What can we do with this population, really, if, if, if we had to lift you know, uh, the export ban? Because I know for a fact that there's an export ban. You can't, you can't take your maize out, out to Congo. You can't take your maize out to Zimbabwe. You can't take your maize to the Congo. What can we do around this, you know, huge population that, you know, we are surrounded with presently? You see, first of all, what the government is doing is wrong. If I produce that base without any, any, any help from the government, why should I not sell it where I want to sell it? That's wrong. If they, they just stop the subsistence farmers from taking out, because they subsidize, they have got almost 75% subsidy there, mm -hmm. you can understand. But what is going is wrong. I also understand that the briefcase men, they go and buy from substance farmers and take it out. So there's a mechanism there why they are doing that. But he, he, truly speaking, it's another leadership. You know what that shows? You have just said there are over 200 million people, if we consider all people around us, not very far, people who are a meter across our border. And these people, they are hungry for our products. So, 
if literally you boost up your productivity mm. maybe, maybe maybe just highlight to the to the many zambian people even the subsistence farmers that are watching uh, today that may not know the reason why there's this export ban you know what is the major reason why this government has uh, effected an export ban it, it's like this it's like this here um uh, if 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 you take these two bags of cement uh, of of uh, of uh, fertilizers you give to a subsistence farmer this has, subsistence farmer pays only 200 kwacha. If it's 600, he pays 200 kwacha. Mm. It's a, a third, 30%, right? And you give him another the seed and everything else. That means 60% or 70% has been subsidized by the government, right? Mm. So once they produce, comes a, a, a businessman with his briefcase. He hasn't put in anything. He says, look, I want to buy your maize. He has cash. They buy the maize from a subsistence farmer, even at a very high price. Then the subsistence farmer, first of all, he remains hungry. He's taken that money, goes to drink, some, some buy clothes, some take children to school, some, and so on and so on. But that maize is gotten. Now, that maize, which has been subsidized by the government 70%, uh, is going to go outside by that briefcase man. He will take it to go and sell it for higher pro profits. I think for me that is wrong. Then I would justify what the government is doing. But if that maize, I can show that that maize was produced by me 100%, why should I not take it out? I should be. I should be able to show that this is what I did. I harvested uh, 200 metric tons, and these 200 metric tons I've got a buyer in Congo. That's why I'm taking it. There should be nothing against it. But there should be everything against the money, uh, the, 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 the product that has been subsidized by the government. I believe, I, I want to think that that is the thinking behind it. There may be a different thinking, but if that's the thinking, for me it's justified. But even then, now that farmer, that subsistence farmer who has sold his maize, out, he remains hungry. Mm. When he remains hungry, the government is going to come back now to come and give him bags of maize because he's hungry. You can't let him die. He will stand up to say, look, hunger has killed us all here. Then the DMU, DMU will put, mm. by, put the trucks... But, but how, 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 how would you describe the current administration's commitment towards agriculture? Because on the 11th... It's of, not there. On the 11th... I mean, well, President Nungu would disagree with you strongly because on the 11th of uh, October 2020, President Nungu says there's no way he and the party will lose power in a country like Zambia where a lot of people are involved in agriculture and they have seen the ruling party's commitment to agriculture. This is President Lungu who said so. <laughs> this is why I'm saying uh, as opposition parties, uh, parties and leaders, we sit on a chair like this one and tell you whatever we want to tell you to justify our positions. The Republican president, mm -hmm. he sits on the highest podium and tells everybody what he feels, he feels like telling them. It's the results. You can't hide the politics in the economy. You know, the economy will reveal you. You can say whatever you want to say. The economy where it's going to reveal you. The rates, the kwacha dollar rate is revealing the, this government that they have got nothing to do. They, they don't have any clue of how to sort it out. The hunger uh, pos position where it is shows this government that it can't handle the economy. The poverty levels where they are, it shows that this government has is, is got no clue. It has got no vision, nothing at all. And that's where we are. I am one person who, if everything was okay here, I didn't need to leave what I'm doing. I would live much more uh, comfortable in my house somewhere in, the, in Bush, uh, where I have a house, and feel good and say the economy is booming, and so on and so on. And don't stand up to come and, you know, in politics, there is nothing good that you, I, perhaps my friends are seeing good things. It's a suffering. You look at the people, your tears roll down. You look at things, the things are not moving. It's a fight that we have day in, day out to make sure that this country goes well. Perhaps other people are enjoying. I'm not enjoying at all, but I'm not crying. I want to do it and I'll do it. And Mr. Mwans and all Zambians there, 10 years, all that I need is 10 years to turn this country upside down mm -hmm. and make this country another Taiwan, another Singapore, another uh, Dubai or whatever. 
I will keep on saying these things. I have the capability with my team. I have the capability to choose young, powerful people to help in shaping this country by providing the best leadership and turn this country into something else. Had we, decided, Ten years. Had we decided to refocus our attention and invest heavily in the agricultural sector, give us a picture of how much money and how much potential this sector has. We would have abandoned money. Abandoned money. Uh, I want to give an example of when I was growing up, there was a, a, a president, you may not know, in Malawi, President Kamuzubanda. In Malawi, they don't have minerals. They have water and perhaps just land like us. We have more water than them. President Kamuzubanda, what he did, he went, uh, what, what was he, I've forgotten the phrase that they were using, but it was all about agriculture. And believe you me, the country just boomed. The country could pay everything that they had. But anyway, somewhere, somewhere they lost it. I don't know. Mm. Yes. That's a very good example for me. But Mr. Mr. Mwansa, I don't go, I don't need to go far-fetched. If you go in the shop right or whichever, pick and pay, or whichever shop that you are going to do, half of the products there, they are coming from agriculture. But anyway, I don't even need to go there. I want you to look at yourself. Mm. And maybe from you can, your foot. And, and maybe you can even help us step by from step. From your eh? foot up to your mm. hair. Just, 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 just an additional question. Maybe you can help us step by step. Government, you formed government in 2021, and yes. you want to turn around the agricultural sector. Step by step, yes. what are some of the steps you would take to ensure that there may be, you know, people are following, and they want to know what steps really, you know, the NARI administration would take to ensure that, you know, this is sector is turned around and we benefit off, Thank uh, you. you know, from this process. Thank you for guiding me. The first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure I demarcate pieces of land according to what I want people to produce. We will advise. So we will de demarcate those pieces of land along the rivers from Kafue River and there where there are animals, we will move the animals to somewhere else. I'm not going to, to trade animals against my people. No. And some of them will even eat them. Yeah? And I'll tell you why I'm saying this. We will we'll eat some of them. And we're going to demarcate pieces for pieces and tell these people mm. what they are going to produce. And then... We are going to look for money, two types of money. One, we are going to help that, those people to go and borrow money where we are guarantor, guarantors as, as, as government. The second thing, we as a government, we are going to look for money that we are going to buy machinery. You are going to borrow money. We are going to borrow money. Are you we aware went, that we are in, we're almost in debt distress as a country? Don't as worry about that. Don't worry about that. Uh, we are not going to borrow money to put it in roads, which does not give you money. We are not going to borrow money to buy food. Which lenders are, are going let to give me you money? Finish to my the which lenders we are not mm. going to borrow money to put it in corruption. We will have a credible way of doing it. By the way, it's already done. It's calculated. I have it. Mm. The plan is I have it. And we have even people that we can work with. You borrow money. To say, look, I'm going to buy this machinery. I'm going to train so many people. If I need to get experts from somewhere, I'll get and put them on the center. Every hundred people, they will have a, every hundred farmers, they will have a center. Hundred mm -hmm. farmers have a center where they get all the technologies and the skills and so on. And they will be helped how to package their goods. They will be helped how to produce their goods. Uh, they will be helped how actually that product that they will have would have an international touch. That's one. Two, I will not sleep. I will move to all other friendly companies to make sure I get market. If we are in, we're drinking milk from, from Kenya, you know Kenya is supplying a lot of milk here. If we are drinking milk from Kenya, why should Kenya not buy honey from me? Why should Kenya not buy other pro agricultural products from me? I will not sleep. I will move and find market everywhere in the world. Mm. I will make sure to say, look, we have been doing this. You are going to do just 10%, 15%, 20% will grow like that. Does it make sense when I explain to you like that? It does make sense. Yes. This is what the first thing we are going to do. 
But that's not the only sector. The other sector that can boost agriculture, we can get money from emeralds. Do you know that emeralds brings a lot of money uh, to people who some of them, they are not Zambians, is going out. The money is going out every day. The biggest chunk of emerald in the world is coming from Zambia. No one can tell us how much money came into Zambia for that. So those monies we will get, we will channel them into agriculture to make sure that we, are, we boost up our production in agriculture. So once that is done, we will move over to another sector and so on and so on. I'm talking about 10 years. Within 10 years, what I'm talking about is complete. It's written. It's there. I've done it. And if certain people want it, they want to sit with me. If even President Lungu, I challenge him. If he wants to sit with me and I show him what I mean, I will go there and show all my plans that I have for this country. Probably should go in, a, in alliance with him in 2021. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> my, my, my friend, I can only help them. I can only be there. I advise them to do what they are doing. But this is the same thing, really. If you're going to advise them and enter into an alliance with them, technically the same thing. No. No, it's not. It's not. The PF government right up now, it has got no willpower to fight corruption. It has no willpower to turn certain things that I'm talking about upside mm. down. I talked about other things that I went to discuss with the president myself. They haven't been done. I sit, I'm looking. I, I boast myself to say there is nobody in this country mm. who knows TV better than I do. So I stood up. I said, I want to see you, president. And he said, oh, come. We went and sat down. Mm. Two, three occasions. And I told him, this is how it can happen. And it will cost only about 40 billion. Where is it now? It is with the Chinese. How much does it cost Zambia? 200 and something million, which we don't have. And this is where the problem is. Well, the headlines in the past few days, what has dominated our headlines is that Zambia has failed to pay uh, 42.5 billion, million rather, uh, coupon on its, you know, three billion debt euro bonds. And, and you sp you're speaking about the agriculture sector. Are mm. we able to pay uh, debt, even maybe using the agriculture sector? Just yes, we will. We will. This is what I was trying to explain, to say, once I have a credible, by, by the way, by the way, let me perhaps share this with anyone who, all Zambians outside there, all this business, all this big business you are seeing, all these big people drilling the binds and things like that, these guys, no one uses money from his pocket. What they do, they write a credible business plan and go to a financer, which is a bank. It may be a conglomerate of banks, about 10, 20, 30 banks. They are going to say, okay, this is fantastic. We are going to give you two billion to go and invest in those mines. Nobody goes in his pocket and removes money and does that. No one. So it's a credible, bankable document, bankable idea, credible, bankable idea. What we are going to do ourselves is to put, first of all, a credible, banking, bankable idea with the credibility of the people who are behind it. You cannot take somebody who has got no credibility to fight corruption who has got no credibility in shaping the country, who has not no credibility in a vision for the country, he cannot get that money. So once we do that, mm. we go now, we move to people we owe money. We say, look, we owe you this money, mm. be it $12 billion or $14 billion or even $20 billion by, by that time. We owe you $20 billion. Look at what we are doing, and this is what we are going to do in paying you back. Sit down and negotiate. Don't find somebody else to come and negotiate for you. They don't know. My forces that are working on me, I need to negotiate myself. Me, myself. If it means me, me, myself, as a president with my team, my, my, my technocrat people, I will go there and make sure I negotiate. And once you negotiate, you keep your track now of your product. Mm. And then once it comes, you are paying those monies. And the people will just say, oh, this is the right people. These are the right people to work with. That's how it works. It, there's no two ways about it. Even America. Do you know, actually, that America is the highly indebted country in the world? 
Americans owe billions and billions. Zambia is owing perhaps a dot of what the Americans are but owing. Much of that but debt is from its, its own people. Yes, but mm. no, they, they have got international from, bankers and things like yeah, that. Yeah, but much of the debt from the America owes is from its own people. Well, this is what we are telling you to say we are going to make millionaires in Zambia. So we can also borrow from our Zambians Let's get once to, we make them. <laughs> Let's get to your observations <laughs> yes. of the current, uh, you know, voter registration. It started on the 9th of uh, November. It's ending on the 12th of December. What are your observations thus far? I do know for a fact that thousands and millions of people have complained bitterly that the process is very slow. You know, um, uh, after um, the summit, the presidential summit, I called for a press conference. And there, in there, I wrote down a paper, which, in fact, even uh, the ECZ, uh, uh, Mr. Shindano himself, he agreed that he saw it. Surely, should it be a problem for you, a Zambian, to cry for your identity? And LRC. Should it be a problem for you as a Zambian to cry for your right to vote? In fact, we must be running there. That's why I said, and I'm saying this, there is a motive behind this. There is a motive behind this. And th me, I'm seeing three motives. First of all, they may want it to be like that, so that there is human manipulation in it. In favor of who now? I, I don't know. Whoever is doing it, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, but whoever is doing it. Because, why, honestly, does it make sense for me to be start doing wrong things in my own house? Unless I know what I want to do with it. So, that's number one. Number two, mm. it may be that they don't even know what they are doing, these people. Completely. They have no knowledge. Number three is that they don't care. Whatever comes, they don't care. These are the three things I'm seeing. And when I wrote there, mm. this country, you have got what you call birth certificates. People like me, perhaps, who belong in a museum and things like that, we, we don't have birth certificates. We have to go and sign a, a what? An affidavit mm. to show that I was born on that day. Yeah. But all you guys, you have birth certificates. And when you die, you have a death certificate. And they buy your permit. And unfortunately enough, even those people who were born in those days, today when they die, they need to go and get burial bar permit, even in a village. Mm. Yeah? Now, these are the things that you use to capture who is dead and who is not. Are we so dull that we cannot just put all those birth certificates together and see that, oh, Mr. Mwansa, today you have turned 16. Mr. Mwansa, today you have turned 18. You need this document. It's automatic. But people don't want to do it. And I asked, I asked the CEO of ECZ, people don't want to do it because of the reasons that I've said. It's better to have a human touch so that you can manipulate it to the results that you want to. So you don't want to cut it off. It's better to feel like that. There's confusion now in the country. Now, if you don't have, and it starts from NRC, it doesn't, it doesn't start from uh, voters', voters registration. Yeah. It starts from an NRC. Mm. If you don't have an NRC, you are good as good as dead. You can't even get a SIM card. You can't get a job. You can't, you can't do anything. Why do you want to deny the rights? Now, on top of that now, you cannot even go and get a voter's card so that you choose somebody who wants to lead, who you want uh, uh, to, to lead, to be led with by. You can't. And these are the biggest problems that I'm seeing. Now, can you trust such a government? As we are talking right up now, the whole Zambia, nobody trusts this government. Just looking at the chaos they have created in terms of giving NRCs and in terms of giving the voters card. You can't trust them. Give me my right to vote. How do you let people, Wangala 4 a.m., Wanyamuka 4 a.m., people who are committed to this country, you let them stay until night. Some of them, they are sleeping on the line as if you are going to pay them. This is, this is catastrophe. This is unheard of. Mm. This is terrible. Now, 
my, my, after saying this, what I'm saying, my plea to everyone, starting from the head of state, is that they should let everybody who is eligible get an NRC. And after that, everybody who is eligible to get a voter's card. As long as these things are not done, they should never, never allow these, these institutions to close. And then they are not even perhaps credible enough. But, but to, to, to get rid of these inadequacies that you've talked about, President Nyerenda, uh, the Electoral Commission of Zambia, that just last week announced that uh, they will, you know, increase workmanship at uh, the polling centers. Uh, you know, they've increased the number of hours. Now the polling centers close at uh, 22, uh, you know, in, in all civic centers ar ar around the country. Don't you think they're responding to the needs of your pleas, you, you, you as the people of Zambia? No. They are trying to fire fight and find a way to justify. There is a reason behind it. How can you tell us to say that we have more than one million who are dead? Don't you know that these people are dead? How do they know there are more than one million? If, if, if today we are going to use the old, old register and my, uh, my voters card, what I have, I still need to go and verify, right? Mm. So by the time that I need to go and verify, they will recapture me and add me to the new ones. So the logic in what these guys are saying, it doesn't. It's like somebody, I'm sorry, I don't want to use words that will, will upset other people, but it's like small chaps who are perhaps two years or three years old, they are playing in the backyard of the house. There's no logic. As me as an engineer, I like, that's why I like my career. It's either there's power or there's no power. That's the logic. If there's no power, it's zero. Or I can say if there's power is one, there's no power is, 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 is zero. But them, they are taking things upside down. Because you, truly speaking, everything that they are telling us, when you sit down, we will squash this register because one million people are dead. Remove them. Simple. And leave that register like that and add a new one. Why do you want to create more jobs? Because you have an agenda. And that agenda I don't know. But that agenda is somewhere. We will see it in 2021. And we are ready for it. But to ensure that uh, there is enough independence in terms of political interference from the Electoral Commission of Zambia, let's see how, uh, you know, when you form government, how you know, do you intend that some of these agencies of government operate? For example, the Electoral Commission of Zambia. How better can they operate? You know, um, from the one that I, I started uh, coming on this podium uh, to talk or to, to, to address the Zambian people, I said the first thing that we are going to do ourselves is to reduce the power. Before I test them, I test how sweet the power is. Reduce the powers, my powers, presidential powers. Reduce them. Mm. Make sure there's, uh, th there's independence between the agents that we choose, government agents and us. I should not be the boss of uh, Mr. Nshindano. I should not be the boss of the chairman of ECZ. I should not be the boss of all of uh, AAC. It shouldn't be. I, I, I am there. There must be people who are free to make decisions according to the empowerment, according to the rules that are put forward for them to operate. These guys, most of these guys, they can't operate. They know. They are fearing. They are fearing. They can be just called. You say, when are you be retired in national interest? And they have got children. They have got bills to pay. Some of them, their children in schools somewhere. You start thinking twice. So you compromise. It's not everybody who is strong, who can stand and oppose. A lot of people outside there, they are in the comfort zone. They want to be like that. They want to be safe. They will not speak against the odds that they are seeing. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem is. Now, this is how we are going to shape the country. You know, I, I was looking at the post which was there, which was saying, in America, the president-elect has to enter office by 12 o'clock on that particular day, I've forgotten the day, in January. January. Yes. And whether, whether... Trump or not. That particular day comes, bang, everything stops. And nobody tells those people what to do. It's the system you create. 
We can create a system that the ECZ people, they operate according to the guidelines. Nobody. You know, I was shocked the other day. Mr. Nshindano was sitting here where I'm sitting. He was asked a question by Innocent to say, can you update the people? What is going, how many you have done uh, so far? His answer was no. The vice president is going to update the people. Why the vice president? That's wrong. It should be him. It's his job. The vice president has got nothing to do with it. It's a different office. And this is what exactly shows you. Why is the vice president having a, a, a hand in, in ECZ? It shouldn't be. And this is what I'm saying. As long as the powers of the, the executive, they are all over. He's messing around with the whole country, messing around with the economy. We are not going to get out from where we are. Mm. But well, on a lighter note, really, it's like the best news for you this year. I don't know if you want to remind us again. What has been the best news for you? I do not <laughs> the fact that you popped, you know, a glass of champagne, uh, I think a month ago. So I think that was a, yes. uh, well, people for the first time saw you laughing, smiling, and uh, yes. you with a you know, bottle of uh, champagne. I'm feeling the, good. Well, the, the, the failure of Buten really mm. put a smile on your face. Yes, it Why? did. Uh, there are lots of things that uh, I wouldn't have agreed with, mm. or I'm not agreeing with. And I, wh why at all costs uh, did they want to be returned to go? It's out of the way. I don't want to discuss about it uh, now so much, but I'm so happy mm. that it did not go through. Because in there, it was going, for example, to let the people, let the, 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 a few people make decisions for the whole country. That means they will multiply it even more. And that, that part shouldn't, you know, uh, uh, where it is right now, that two-thirds majority is a thing of the day. It's very good. If you remove the two-thirds majority, mm. that means people can even borrow more without consulting you. Without consulting, they will just go vote because it's a simple majority and do. There are many other things inside there that are not good. They would go and manipulate the constitution without consulting you. So it is not the sweet things. There are good things inside there. A lot of good things, basically. But let's read between the lines. Let's be a bit clever. We are in these problems where we are today mm. because the leadership of this country has through and through failed us. That's where we are here. Mm. Um, how, how are prospects looking for you know, you know, on your side? in terms of the 2021 general elections? How? Uh, our prospects for you as an Arab? Just, you, 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 just when I sit here and the way I'm talking, it shows that the, our, our, our position is fantastic and it's good. Very, very good. Confident that you'll win the 2021 I, general I'm election. very confident. I know what I'm doing. Mind you, uh, I have always said, Biklon says, it's a steep balantayo zavana. I don't produce steel babies. I produce babies which are kick kicking, and this is one of them. The people outside there, they are seeing, they are seeing who is eligible to run this country. And that's why you have seen there's so much turnover. People want to go and vote and kick these guys out. They want to put a leadership, a leadership that, which is like the one which has got vision, you, and we can tell you exactly you, you, you mentioned what a very, You mentioned a very dangerous statement in one of the local TV stations that Kapena Aminali be Salangana Akuza Dawshon Bamwala Nishazma Azua Pamina Emilida. What did you mean, Reed? Where are you standing on this? I know you are a label in Jingan and Zabwezak. Ngati Ngatim Hof, Ujamun Dalibe, Alibe, Tech, and Sab Salang. Akaguza, even Zakute Mamala, Nishi Azua Pamina Emilida, a bond of Alimala. The same with me. If I'm telling you to say I'm going to win these elections, I know where I'm standing and I know what I'm doing. I hope you're not looking at manipulating the system. Uh, do I look like one? No, President Stephen Yerenda, thank you so much for having made time to appear on the special edition of the assignment. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I want to say this. Uh, I want to say this. Please go ahead. The Republican president, with all your agents, especially ECZ, 
make sure that every Zambian get who is eligible to get an NRC and then go and get a voter's card is given that chance. Whether it goes up to March, let it be. Let it be. Because that's the basis for our democracy. Zambia is for Zambians. Only Zambians will develop this country, as I've been saying. Please, let's unite and make this country the better. Ten years, I promise. Thank you so much again for having made time to appear on a special edition of the assignment. Thank you so much, my producer and director, Mavuto Piri. My name is Andrew Mwansa. See you again Wednesday for another special edition of the assignment. Good night.